I'm going to be talking about <coughs> debugging with formats that aren't act one, essentially, and especially how it relates to you know, uh, the Dragon debugger, and uh, not just Dragon, but that's going to be a large part of it. I mean, it's going to be the entirety of it. So yes, just Dragon. Um, and I'm going to start to motivate the problem and kind of give the goals, what we want to do with, uh, with Dragon, and then um, kind of open up to discussion to try to understand what other people's problems are, uh, you know, if they have problems with debug info, uh, how we can uh, build this to be the best solution, not just for, for the use cases I have, but hopefully for, for others as well. Um, and I'm gonna grab water, because my mouth will get dry. Okay, so to give the kind of motivation, I work at Oracle on the Linux sustaining team, and sustaining refers to the software, we're finding bugs, fixing them, making sure our customers are happy. And um, that means that, you know, if our customers encounter a bug, they um, configure, have already configured KDump and they give us a VM core, we go on to our secure servers, we do an analysis with Crash or Dragon. Um, historically, there was a lot of Crash. It's becoming more and more Dragon oriented and that's been really fun to see. Um, it's a lot more flexible for us, but uh, frequently, it's not that simple, you know, sometimes you can't just open the VM core, you know, do uh, a 30 minute debugging session and I found the bug, that's it, you know. A lot of times there's, there's, there's more, there's some back and forth from the customer, you need to uh, maybe do some debugging on their system. And that's hard. Uh, customers, I mean, A, do not like being, their, their systems being debugged, especially, you know, they, staging systems are better for that sort of thing, but they, they don't like that and it's hard to do. Um, internally, we get to have a, a shared debug info repository somewhere where we can just pop open a VM core and find our debug info and we're working. You know, we're, we don't spend any time thinking about it. But on a customer system, you need them to install debug info and that means do they need to configure a debug info repository or do you want them to just, do you want them to install it to the system or download an RPM? There's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, and customers also don't like having debug info on their system. Sometimes that's policy. You know, I, I don't know what the policy is, but I've learned not to ask or try to reason. <laughs> In those situations, I just, I move on. Um, there are battles you can't fight, especially when you're being, you're being paid to fix problems, not add more. So that's one motivation I have. Um, but another motivation is new users to drag it. Um, debug info can be a bit of a brick wall for people. Um, you know, you, you say that you heard of this new debugging system, it's cool, but you want to try it out and you need to install de debug info and, you know, some distributions, you know, you look at the Dragon documentation and it's great, but some distributions just don't even have debug info for the kernel. This one would be Arch, I'm, by the way. Uh, I'm, it's frustrating, but yeah. And then other other distributions, they have it, but you know, it's a it's a it's a long list in the in the Dragon documentation. It is great, but there's a long list of steps you need to take. Uh, which distribution are you on? Do you want to? Do you need to set up a repository? If you install the debug info package, is it going to get updated with your kernel, or are you going to have an old debug info sitting on there next time you upgrade the kernel? I don't know. Have you used that feature of Yum? I forgot. Um, similarly, you know. You could use debug info D. Does your, uh, does your distribution have one of those servers? Uh, how will that work? How will you delete it once it's gone? So it, it can just, there's a lot of complexity here and I'd like to see a world where, you know, maybe, oh yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'd like to see a world where we can make that easier. Um, another kind of motivating factor I have here is that Dwarf is big um, and this is just, based on the files that I had on my laptop actually, but um, for say a VM Linux, the core kernel in, in our distribution, uh, the debug info size can range from 400 megabytes, hey, that's not too bad, all the way up to a gigabyte, uh, just for the VM Linux. And then let's talk about kernel modules, depending on how many you've got loaded, that can add a few hundred more megabytes. Um, and to be clear, I'm not trying to, uh, to cast any aspersions, uh, be negative about Dwarf because for the price you get amazing features. You get source code mapping, uh, you get call frame information that lets you look at, I mean, Omar just demonstrated getting variables out of stack traces. 
you know, without any work. I remember when we were like reading assembly to, to get those uh, because Crash couldn't get it for us. So, you know, really great stuff. But uh, the majority of the features that you're going to rely on in a script while debugging are probably just needing three things. A symbol table, so you can look up a global variable some type information so you can interpret that memory, that variable, and then maybe, and this isn't even a maybe, you might not need it for most scripts where you're just you know, wanting to read memory, maybe write memory. Uh, you might not even need a stack unwinder, but, but it's still a good thing to have. Uh, and you probably don't need variable access if you do want a stack unwinder, so. Now is the time to talk about goals and observations here. The kernel already has a symbol table, and I don't mean the ELF symbol table. It has chaos um, And I don't have the, the little table to show you, but pretty much every distribution on Earth uh, supports chaos all, which is not just exported symbols. It's every symbol in the kernel. Um, so you can pretty much rely on that for distributions. The kernel also expects to have a reliable stack unwinder, so as reliable as you can get in the world of interrupts and asynchronous stuff. So you've already got usually frame pointers, but on x86-64 orc, um, which is very cool stuff. And uh, finally, there's sometimes type information that's outside of what you have from Dwarf that might be BPF uh, or BPF type format. Um, many distributions are coming with that enabled, and um, on, on UEK kernels from Oracle, we actually have, it's just maybe a few hundred line patches in total that add support for uh, CTF that is otherwise built into all the major tool chains. Uh, and CTF, I'm going to get into a little bit more because that's going to be a, a big part of this. But the, the main point here is that the kernel already has a lot of this stuff available at runtime for you if you know how to take advantage of it. So what I'd like to see is kind of a mix and match approach available to people who are using Dragon. Um, you have symbol tables. Um, you could get it from an ELF file or from KL sims. Modules have exported symbols uh, that you can look at in the, in the structures. And they also have module KL sims. Um, so you could use those. I'd like to see a pluggable way that you could choose other types systems like uh, CTF or BTF in addition to Dwarf. Um, and, and if I didn't make it clear enough beforehand, big fan of Dwarf, uh, not trying to replace it here. And if I'm, if I'm debugging a customer VM core on, our, on my own uh, you know, debugging server, I don't want to use these features because I want to have source code mapping. I want to have CFI, I want to do all that. But if I, this is a kind of an 80-20 thing. You, know, you can get 80% of that functionality with 20% of the cost if you just cut it back to just a few things. And that's what I want to see enabling some really good stuff out there. So, oh yeah, just some examples of what that might be. Uh, you could go fully dwarfless. You could have uh, CTF, chaos sims, frame pointer or orc unwinder, and you know, no, no debug info file involved. It might be that you have the VM Linux, but you don't know where the module files went and you can, you can add some symbol tables from the existing information and you can get some more information about those modules, maybe even use BTF for that. Um, and then, you know, example three, it's kind of, it's maybe not as practical, but it's something I always thought was fun is if you could have a standalone VM core that everything you needed to interpret it was actually already included in the core dump. You could have chaos inside of it, BTF built into the kernel and the unbinding information is all part of it as well. So you could interpret everything in there and debug the basics without downloading any other file. You just run Dragon and you're looking at it now. So those are just some ideas of what I'd like to see out of this. Um, so I think probably more people are familiar with the BPF type format, but I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about CTF here because this is something that's been really exciting for me and it's been something that we've already packaged internally at Oracle and we've been pushing upstream a lot and we're getting some traction on, I think. So compact type format is the compact C type format in particular. Uh, it's already built into GCC and GDB. I don't have the exact versions, but I know people here do. Um, and it's, it's built in so you can generate it with GCC like normal, you can run GDB like normal, and you can use it as if it was dwarf except for the features it doesn't have. Uh, um, 
And normally it's not supposed to be stripped out. Uh, you, you, you strip to get rid of the debug info, put it into your debug info packages. But in this case, it's compact. It's really small. The whole point of it is that it stays in your ELF file or otherwise stays with your main package so that at runtime, you can get the type information you need. Um, in the case of the kernel, the way we have it and the way we've been uh, sending upstream patches, it's, it's a little special. It doesn't sit in the ELF file because a kernel image isn't usually an ELF file anyway, so um, it can be. That, that's a, that was a bad statement. <laughs> it can be. Um, but it usually gets packaged into a little file on the file system that's a standalone archive. And so it's not necessarily in the kernel image, but it's usually available if you are running on a live system anyway. Um, and yeah, it, it describes types. Maybe not, it, it describes all of the C types that you could see uh, just as well as Gorf would. So um, yeah, that is what CTF is. So. That's kind of the goals and a little background. I'm gonna talk now about kind of implementation status in Dragon, specifically for all of those goals with a focus on CTF, but BTF as well. So step one for all of this is uh, Dragon is actually designed pretty well for a lot of this stuff. You can actually plug in types, type systems, you can plug in different ways to find uh, variables. One thing that you can't plug in right now is a symbol, uh, symbol finding system, a symbol table, essentially. It's kind of built in the assumption that you've got an ELF file that has an ELF symbol table. Um, and so we've actually got in review right now um, a system that's going to allow you to plug in any function you'd like to look up symbols in, the cur or in, in whatever you're debugging. Um, it, you can plug in a C function or a Python function if you want. And just to demonstrate what that looks like, here's my, uh, my symbol finder that I wrote uh, a couple nights ago just for fun to demonstrate it. Uh, yeah, if you look up a symbol name, named secret or adder42, uh, you get the secret to life, universe, and everything. Yeah. Um, just a, a kind of this is not very interesting in terms of uh, showing off the capabilities, but you can see that Dragon, once you've added it in, it uses it like normal. So um, you can also do this in C, which will end up being a lot faster. Um, let's copy. But so that system is kind of in a uh, in review. It's getting, getting ready. Um, and on top of that, the next thing that we would want is being able to use that plugin system to plug in KAllSims as your simple uh, finding system. So we've got this also in a pull request up right now on Dragon. It's in a draft uh, since it's based on the previous pull request. Um, but it's, it's a C implementation, so it's faster and it can do it in two ways. The easy way, the maybe obvious way is that say that you are running live uh, against prop K core, then you can just read prop K all sims, assuming you have permission to read it because uh, technically, uh, root can only see the addresses, and uh, you can actually run Dragon without root if you do some fun stuff that we recently added. Um, that's, yeah, a separate discussion. But so you still need root, but only to open the file originally. Anyhow, um, the other option, if you don't want to read prop chaos in, because you're not running against K core, uh, say you have a VM core, is that Dragon can actually find the necessary symbols inside the VM core info note inside of the VM core, and it can find enough information about where to look for KL Sims data structures that it can then find them, parse out the KL Sims information. It's compressed in a really interesting way. If you've ever read that code, uh, if you haven't read it, I would encourage you to check it out. It's not GZIP, it's just a compression method that someone made up. Um, yeah, uh, but, it's, but it's cool. Uh, in any case, uh, so we can do that. We don't need to use the file in prop. We can just uh, uh, parse the data structures ourselves. Either way works. Obviously, it's faster to just read it out of proc. Um, but there are some issues here. Unfortunately, you know, ELS symbols actually come with size and uh, some other metadata, like whether it's local or global, whether it's a function symbol or a uh, data symbol or some other type of symbol. So there's a lot of metadata that ELF includes. 
And Chaos Sims has some of that. Um, if you look over here, um, these are just a couple I pulled from my kernel. I, I didn't reboot, so please, um, I'm sorry I broke KSLR. Um, but yeah, uh, there's the D there uh, tells us that it's a data and the fact that it's capitalized means that it's global, not local. But that's the best that we get of that metadata. In particular, there's no size. Slab mutex starts at that address you know, that ends in zero, zero, and it presumably continues yeah. until slab caches starts at address two, zero, so that, that's maybe 32 bytes, but if it was, if it had some sort of SMP alignment, cache line alignment, whatever, there could be a gap there. You don't know the size as, so you might use the heuristic, well, let's just take the next symbol and use that as the size. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. Or if it does, then per CPU end is a really, really big symbol. Um, obviously, you know, the, the way you can get around this per CPU is kind of special. It's, it's x86 specific because of segment registers. Uh, you, could, you could say, well, per CPU end is the end of the per CPU section. Let's just say that's a zero size symbol and move on with life. Or we have, I have another workaround which sets a maximum size for a symbol because this becomes a problem, say, when you have a pretty print from Dragon and it's saying, well, this user space address is actually per CPU N plus a few you know, gigabytes. It's within that symbol. So you don't want that. That's why I, I try to avoid that. Um, but let's see, there's another issue here. Um, and this doesn't actually include the code changes, but um, recently, and by recently, I mean two years ago. <laughs> Chaos Sims got updated to add support for bigger symbols for Rust, and that's pretty cool. Um, but that 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 bespoke compression system that we that I mentioned got changed, and um, it's a kernel it's a kernel thing. As long as you change the kernel and you you update all the code in the kernel, there's the kernel doesn't necessarily care about making this easy for other people to parse. But um, unfortunately, that means that uh, I, there's there's some messiness because this isn't something people backport, at least I hope not. Um, this is a pretty a pretty silly change, or not silly change, a good change, but it's not something that you would backport to stable kernels. So right now I've gotten away with uh, doing a kernel version check. However, I expect a big thumbs down from Omar uh, on that. And I, I need to add some sort of kernel, in-kernel versioning system some way for us uh, um, to determine what's the most recent what, how to interpret chaos in data structures in the kernel. Omar actually has some experience with that, so it's it's not hard. We did, he did that for um, for work. Oh, we have questions there. Just about the per CPU end, you will never find an actual address that is that small. This is used as an offset from the per oh, yeah. CPU base for your current CPU. Yes, for sure. Yeah, that's a. Uh, Base, yeah, it's an offset from the base, um, and it's you use the segment registers in x86 to find the per CPU. Um, yeah, it's not a real address, but it's it's good enough because Dragon expects that it can take whatever fake address you have and then find the per CPU base and then offset. So, however, however it's implemented on the architecture, Dragon wants to know what the fake address is. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so the way I, I'm working around this with kernel version checks, I'm hoping to add a, a version 2K all sims so that we can uh, do a more clean way of, of detecting these changes. But I caught it late, so unfortunately that means I'm gonna have to try to get this backported to all the systems that, all the kernels that currently have this, so yeah. Um, but those are kind of the two main issues I've seen with KL sims. Step three would be adding CTF. Uh, support and this is uh, already I didn't link to it but we've got a, um, a branch up on my dragon fork right now that has the implementation based on those previous two pull requests and um, it's you know we're using it a lot actually I've, I've been using it a lot we're testing it um, in, in a lot of different kernels it's been working very well so this is not just you know oh I have a development branch somewhere this is something that's been we're keeping updated we're uh, using pretty well. Um, that adds support for CTF via bin utils libctf. Uh, this is we're not we're not adding you know I'm not interpreting the CTF format myself. 
because Bin Utils uh, standard as standard already has all of that information. So we just use the library for it. Um, and it's pretty simple when you think about it. You, if you want to look up an object, you just find the symbol, uh, find the type for that object, which CTF knows, and then you combine those two information to get back a variable. So it's, yeah, pretty simple. That said, implementation, not always as simple as real life or as we would hope. So um, the, other, the other step three, uh, BTF implementation. Uh, right now, status of that is that I have a very, very old branch that implemented BTF. And unlike CTF, with BTF, I just ended up uh, parsing the format myself because I don't really know whether we have good uh, BTF. I know there's libbpf out there. Um, it seems tied to the kernel version right now, so it seems like it might be a bit trouble to link in a, in a reliable way, whereas bin utils, you just you have it on your system. Um, it's also a little difficult because BTF doesn't really have a format uh, version to it. It just is tied to whatever the kernel version is. I think there's a table somewhere that shows new features added over time, but there's not a particular format version, which means it's a little bit more difficult to, to open BTF in the kernel and just say, I know I have support for version three and this is version two, so we I, I have backward compatibility, so we're good. Um, so there are there are definitely some some things that that could be done to make BTF a little bit easier for sure. But as of now, it's parsing the format and and hope that you can keep it up to date faster than the kernel does. So um, I think that's my my last slide. I have just some discussion questions here on um, things that you might consider uh, things that you might want to talk about. Uh, how how large debug info sizes impact you if you're doing a lot of debugging. Uh, whether you would use any of these formats in Dragon or in other debuggers. Um, yeah, how do you manage your debug info? Would this be something that's really useful to you? Uh, what APIs? Any thoughts on it? any of those things are welcome. That's all I've got. Uh, right over there. Um, so yeah, smaller runtime debug info sounds wonderful um, because it's a huge pain to download some of these things, but, you know, depending on where you are at times and stuff too. But uh, what do you give up? When, yeah. you, when you when you when you if you were to like you know if we give up using elf, you know the elf debug info I mean yeah. what do we what do we get good question um, so the things that I highlighted um, probably like slide one or, or like three or four here. I don't know if I can bring it up but um, things I highlighted are essentially source code mapping is one big thing mm -hmm. that you don't get um, oh yeah there it is. Uh, source code mapping is something that that or gives you where you can see where each fun line of a function maps to source code. Um, in terms of function unwinding, you lose some detail there as well because uh, say that you're using a frame pointer or or it doesn't really matter. Either way, all those are going to give you is the canonical frame address, right? They're going to give you a, a stack pointer, a frame pointer maybe, but they're not going to restore for you things like inline function calls. So you could be three inline functions deep in a stack trace and you just get the uh, whatever the actual function name, symbol name is, and that's the only frame you get. And then you won't get registers or variable names. So those are things I love to have in a stack trace, but they're also things that I mainly use when I'm interactively debugging, not so much that I use if I wanted to run a script for diagnostics, say for a customer. So it, it balances out for me, but you do lose things. And I don't know if Omar has other thoughts on uh, useful things Dwarf does. That was it. That was it. <laughs> Got another, or Philip, were you already? Yeah, but just a quick comment. Another thing where this might be very interesting is um, out of tree or proprietary out of tree modules where the vendor doesn't ship debug info, then you at least have, at least have the chance that they don't strip the BTF or CTF information from the binary. Yeah, definitely a necessary evil sometimes for us. Uh, just a, an honest question. Uh, when I hear about like people complaining about Dwarf being too big, uh, I always wonder if has anyone tried to just make Dwarf generation more fine-grained because it's not an all or nothing. It's uh, You can decide, oh, I just want it for global symbols and don't have all the die tree. That's, some, that's a very good question, and I've heard it come up a couple times, and 
That's not something I actually know, but I see Omar waving his hand. Maybe he, he can give some context on how possible this is. Yeah, I think if you control the debug info, that's something that you can do. But for a lot of users that are probably just doing this from their distro, the distro is probably going to just enable everything because they don't know what tools you're going to be using on it, and then you're back at square one. Um, I was thinking the question uh, in the perspective of instead of reinventing new debug info formats all the time, like changing GCC to say, oh, I just want this slice of. I was just wondering. It's not the. Yeah. I, there are there are options you can you can enable or disable in GCC right now to to uh, choose different things, uh, and there are also ways you can deduplicate or uh, like a strip down the debug info after the fact. But I don't think anyone does it on the kernel debug info. Uh, distros do it on like a use some distros do it on some user space packages. DWZ. But, yeah, DWZ. Yeah. But I haven't seen it done on the kernel. Okay. Thanks. Sounds like it sounds like the the conflict if you don't is that you can either do it with GCC and not emit as much debug info, but then you lose it for all the use cases where you wanted that. But if you use something that could like selectively strip, maybe you have a better chance. But it sounds like that's not used much. So I'm wondering if I mean part of the issue is not that when you build uh, the debug info. I mean if you would have the 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 a way to extract both a compact debug info and a, the full debug info, and then get both sets to the end users, mm -hmm. then I think you'd have, you'd have, you'd cover both use cases. Yeah, I, I think that's true, yeah. Um, yeah, and the nice thing is a lot of the things that, uh, that Steven is making use of here are in the kernel anyways, so you're not actually adding anything extra to have your compact thing. Uh, but I had a question related to that, unless you had anything else. Okay, um, so you mentioned that CTF is a is a separate archive that just sits on the file system. So does that mean that it, you can't use it for this like the the dream use case of like standalone VM core? Yeah, that's that's correct. Uh, if you had the VM core, unless unless you happen to be lucky and generate a page cache that happened to have it in page cache and you didn't filter it out with make dump file, then I guess you could find it, but that's not going to be supported anyway. So. Yeah, you can't use it for that uh, dream case, but yeah. it's kind of a, a very practical uh, thing to let go, or it's, or that that is a use case that I'm excited about. But it's, I, I think it's a pretty reasonable sacrifice to make to have it for live use cases. That is one thing that BTF does have, right? Yeah. Yeah, except that it doesn't have variables, which CTF does yeah, have. That's that's something I've been I've been letting slide for a while. Yeah, I've got some some patches out there to fix that. Yeah. All right. Uh, you mentioned debug info D as well. Uh, so Dragon does support debug info D for user space stuff. We just get it for free from a yep. libdwfl. Um, I we could do it. F this is more addressing like the convenience factor. Like you're still gonna have to wait for to download this huge one gigabyte thing. Um, so we could support it for the kernel as well. Except last time I checked the debug lib or the debug info D client. It's, or maybe it was a server, did something silly where it, it felt to me like it was going through the whole RPM every time that you asked for something. So you'd ask for a module and then it'd have to be, like the server side would have to decompress everything up until that module from the RPM to give it back to you. Yeah. So it took like three hours. <laughs> yeah, RPMs are not a great format if you wanted to find a random file and then get it. <laughs> It's eleven now, so yeah, you're right. I, we can take any more questions to the uh, to the hallway track if that works for everyone. So thank you. We'll be back in half an hour.